moment of truth for a paratrooper lasts but a few seconds, but they say the exhilaration lasts a lifetime. Even on these practice jumps from elaborate simulators, the airborne officer candidates seem to relish the momentary rush of adrenaline of the jump before they must regain control of their bodies to retrieve their weapons and hit the ground shooting. For their brief moment of flight with 70 pounds of equipment strapped to them. Instead of relying on static lines to deploy their parachutes, Soviet airborne troops are trained to pull their own ripcords, especially for low altitude and night jumps. The five-step release mantra they practice is their only salvation in their fall from the heavens. Rain. Unlike other airborne forces, Soviet airborne divisions are fully mechanized units. Each squad has an armored personnel carrier, allowing them to fire and maneuver while covering considerable ground. These fast-moving, all-terrain vehicles have enough firepower to engage enemy armor units and fortified positions without support and protect their crews from chemical attacks. Each vehicle carries a crew of three and six infantrymen armed with an array of firepower and night fighting devices. In one exercise, the Soviets were able to drop more than 150 fighting vehicles and 8,000 soldiers on a target in less than a half hour. These rudimentary devices are, rudimentary devices are used to prepare the cadets both for the sensation of freefall, if their main chute doesn't open at first, and for the more extreme disorientation of freefalling, riding inside their armored personnel carrier which two of them must do every time a vehicle is air dropped. 